The body of a 23-year-old swam up to the light and broke the surface in the heart of Fukushima. This is a dream sequence, delivering her from her body. And like a child's dreams, it's all fear and heavenly magic. She knows as much about Japan as a young girl does about love, yet thrusts herself into the idea space with the authority of a seer, filled by the piety of fasting and heavy aesthetics. Her thoughts are infantile, dreaming of samurais and katanas. Her Nigerian thoughts don't blend with Far East Asia, a mixed drink of palm wine and sake. But still she dreams of Japan, sending her ghost into Fukushima, a five foot seven tree trunk of polished mahogany and black bristles, standing in a pool of toxic seawater and she glows with radiation, nuclear waste stinging her eyes, mutating her tear ducts so that they stream perpetually. Her conscience is running from the dark chimeras of American pop tragedy, equality, imperialism, and legislation, and the hungry blacks in the streets bending every which way they look like the characters of Japanese letters and are at least as expressive, like people suffering from radiation poisoning or living with the stigma. She stares into the abandoned abyss inquiring, intent on seeking reparations. Who owns the moon under which the separated lovers cry? Where do we perform the musical of death after we die and burst from these skins to spill our wine all over the face of the sky? How many times will she visit the light of the moon, carrying tragedy's head on a cotton pillow? She asks the purple tainted waters, once blue, now purple, a solution of blue tsunamis, a melted reactor, and a melted red sun. She asks which way it is to any old man's house with whom she can ignore her troubles by sending the ghost of her thoughts to an alien country. And the old Japanese man can also ignore the problems of Japan by pouring her rice wine and relating images of cherry blossoms from whitewashed memories while they visit the moon. Her thoughts burn with heavy neon lights, flashing love symbols, to caricature mascots of gender groups. Her thoughts are burning with love and her throat burns with the old man's drinks. She chokes on dry noodles and fresh fish that no one will buy because it's stuffed with gamma rays. But she doesn't plan on living much longer anyway because her thoughts are burning with knowledge, a last meal. She carried her god into Fukushima. And when another earthquake came, her chest burst like an exploding sun. And all the shrines shook. Everything crumbled into purity in one last and final shake. Everything but the tiniest speck of true love. Nothing would ever be the same. <laughs>